Welcome to Start Writing. I'm Joe Bondosky. And I'm Jay Washburn. Today we are going to do, this will, this will be an in-depth look at action beats. And so what we're going to be doing is a little bit different than something we've done before. We're trying it out. And so we, we did a re-release of the episode on action beats. And then I went through a, a chapter in my book and I picked out all the action beats and I, and I, I bolded them. And then I saved a new draft and I went through and I converted all of those down to emotional tags. Um, so it would be like worry one, frustration one, worry two. So I could track the building of the emotion in the action beats. And then I could intentionally focus on developing those action beats. And so I only did it for one character in this revision of the chapter. And then I go back through and I look at all those, you know, frustration one, two, three, four, uh, and then frustration cooling one, two. And then I, I built in the action beats. Wait, so and when you're naming it, is this incident one, like the first time it's in the chapter and the second time it's in the no, chapter? No, so this is a building, right? So one is the first building block. And so I, when I do action beat two, so when I do frustration two, it's not the second incident of frustration. Rather, I want it to be a little bit more intense okay. than a one. And so, so you're saying he's <clears throat> he's feeling frustration throughout an incident one or and we're trying to item one is when he first it, you happens. first show it in the text. Yeah. And then it's it's lingering but you're showing it more powerfully. Yeah, and I'm trying to, to build it so he's becoming more and more frustrated and angry okay. as things go on. And so you'll see I'll build like one, two, one, two, three, and then I'll shift emotions as things kind of that roller coaster. And then the focal emotion will build the climax and then we'll do a cooling of that emotion mm. as opposed to just a shift out. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through, we'll look at what are the original action beats that came out in the in the, in the first draft. Uh, how did we write those in as I wanted to build them with the, you know, anger one, anger two? What did they convert to? And then we'll look at what were the final action beats that came out of that and other transformations that came. And so we really just wanted to take a really deep look at that. And, uh, you know, something we're looking at it doing with the episodes is a, a strong discussion, deep theory, and then a deep revision, look at a chapter to kind of see how it plays out as you, as you work these tools in. So we'll see, we'll see how it works and, and see what people think. But before that, we have this week in critiques. Oh, okay. So I've been reading a bunch of sci-fi because I'm writing a sci-fi novel. And I found this book called The Dreaming Void. And uh, maybe this is just... Actually, you can comment on this, Joe. But uh, this is a sci-fi book that had like probably 10 really interesting concepts. Uh, and a lot of them were just kind of thrown in on the side and they didn't get uh, they didn't get very much depth. So this was quality. This was quantity instead of quality. Oh, interesting. And uh, I think I think that this book would have been more interesting to me if he had picked one of those and just like really gone in depth into it rather than kind of juggling all at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure though. I, I mean, as far as sci-fi goes, I think this is a fairly popular. Give us, novel. give us one of the ideas, or or give us um, or one that you wish he'd done. Maybe the whole book was this one idea, and then throw like three more at us so we feel overwhelmed like you do. Okay. Um. Well, so first, the the dreaming void, like it's called that because there's this void at the center of the galaxy, and there's kind of a barrier that people are approaching, and they can go inside the dream. And there's a there's a big uh, question around what's at the center of the galaxy in this void, mm-hmm. which creates these dreams. So that's like a very central concept to the series, I suppose. I haven't read on yet. Yeah. Um, but then there's something called just physical humans. Whoa. And so when you're done walking around in your biological form, then you transfer your I'm your mind not, yeah. into a computer. And you continue living kind of in a video game, essentially, which is like another super <laughs> cool concept and a great name, like post physical and yeah. all this stuff. That's super cool. It it got a decent amount of screen time, but not that much because <laughs> we had to talk about the Dreaming Void. And honestly, maybe they're connected at the end of the trilogy. I don't know. Yeah. But it just felt like I wasn't quite given enough. Uh, there's also higher humans. So like you take your biological form and you enhance it. Uh-huh. And so you're not just regular DNA. Now you're like special Superman DNA. Yeah. And that's super cool. Not a lot of screen time. It's in there. Uh, 
there's something called the Gaia field. So we talked about uh, the word pathos in one of our uh-huh. vocab episodes. The Gaia field is like this emotional field that emanates out from real people. And there's science that can now detect that. Huh. So you can essentially see emotions with the Gaia field. Anyway, that's it's another cool concept. So I guess I'm torn. I, I partially love the book because he had all these awesome concepts. And yet I do kind of just have this lingering hunch that if he would have just zoomed in on one of these, I would have loved it even more. I, I don't know if that's true, but well, that's my hunch. So you read The Expanse, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's a lot in there too, but I didn't feel like anything was, you know, not uh, covered sufficiently. Like you've got the belters and their unique biology yeah. because they live in, in lower gravity. You know, they're kind of long and yet they they can't even come to Earth because they can't breathe because yeah. of the gravity. And then you've also got like the Martians and, the, you know, their super high technology and the way they're terraforming. And, you know, I feel like there's a lot in there. Did you feel that way when you were reading The Expanse? Uh, no, I, I didn't really. I, I felt like, I don't know, I, I, maybe it's that with The Expanse, it's close enough to actual Earth that I could kind of see that as a future. Mm. And so I, I kind of felt a sense of place. Whereas with uh, The Dreaming Void, I almost always just felt completely upside down, where it's just nah. like, this is crazy. It was cool. <laughs> But it was kind of unsettling. Like, yeah, I don't even okay. know where I am. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that and, was and cause, why. Yeah, because, but... I mean, the, the, the Expanse, they really worked hard to make it as real as possible, right? And then whenever whenever there was like, okay, we're missing a step in science, we magic it, right? Yeah. Like, one of the things is, like, for them to hit the speeds they were traveling in space, we could not survive. And so what you have is you just get the stem, right? They get this injection, while they're experiencing these higher levels of gravity and they survive it. Thus, just kind of this magic science step to fill that in. But we already understand gravity and momentum and, you know, things like that. And so I kind of, kind of yeah, see what you're saying yeah. there. Anyway, so. it's a cool book. I'm I'm not bagging it. If you're interested in sci-fi, you'll, I think you'll like it. Uh, so. It's just something to think about, whether to do depth or breadth. So, okay. So we'll get into the discussion now. So this is chapter four. Uh, from from the book I'm working on right now, which is The Skyfall Conspiracy. It's a prequel to, to my novel, When the Sky Falls. And so in it, we'll, we'll, it, it'll be a little bit hard to follow, um, but I don't want you to be focusing on the story so much. I want you to be focusing on the action beats and the emotions that they're portraying there and whatnot. So... This is just a story. It's between uh, William Stevenson, Winston Churchill, and Neville Chamberlain. And the three men are having an argument about what to do about the night of broken glass that has just happened in Germany. So that's where we're at. But we're only going to be looking at Stevenson's action beats. So we're going to go through... Uh, probably what I'll do is I'll read the original action beat, and then I'll, I'll read its conversion. All right. So the original action beat... Uh, with its dialogue here, is not sure how useful my context will be. Stevenson compared the details in the reports to a map of Germany. I pay them to observe things, write them down. They're not soldiers or even spies, just scientists and assistants. He shook his head. I don't think they'll want to get involved. And uh, so the two action beats here are, uh, he's, he's kind of comparing the details in the reports of the map of the G- Germany and he shakes his head, right? So then- well, and just I just want to help if anybody's lost. So we have a, a paragraph of dialogue. The character is speaking, but that's broken up by those two pieces, those two action beats. Yeah. So he compared the details, and then later he shook his head. So I'm looking at that beat. He shook his head. And so I convert that action beat to worry one. So that's how that converts in the next draft. So are you and, and for your writing process? You actually write in the manuscript where you want. Yeah, I actually wrote, wrote it. I wrote in the manuscript because what I wanted to do was to be able to go back and look at the action beat and not get stuck on what was already there. So I deleted it completely and I said, I want to focus on the emotion. I want to make sure that I'm not just going with what I wrote. Rather, I want to sit down and think about this is the emotion I want the audience to get. And I need to find a way to communicate that. And you'll see that as we go through this, sometimes 
I had to expand the dialogue. Sometimes I had to expand the interiority. But because I had deleted what was there and just said, this is the emotion, I had to really think about how do I communicate that emotion specifically. And I think this is kind of fun just because it's getting down to the nitty gritty of the craft. But Joe actually has in this manuscript, it says he, square bracket, action beat one, worry. Yeah. Unsquare bracket, (laughs) period. That's the sentence. Is the square bracket saying action beat one? Yeah. He, he somethinged. And then. Yeah, yeah. And then the next version, he's going to put something in there. And then uh, we have the next line of dialogue here. And that's. Uh, and uh, so it's just dialogue. There's not even an action beat, right? It says, easy to say from this room, it wouldn't be our lives in danger. So in the next draft of the manuscript, I write in action beat two, worry two. Right. Now, there was nothing. I didn't even have a tag on that dialogue. But the idea is here, you just want to reinforce with the reader, help them empathize with what he's going through. Right? Yeah. And so so let's look at the third draft before we – because the next action beat, what we have is an emotional shift. And uh, so let's then look at the, the final conversion on these action beats. So the final conversion here of these action beats. So remember, this is worry one. And worry two. The first action beat we get, uh, I pay them to observe things. I gotta, I gotta expand this. I can't see it. I pay them to observe things, write them down. They're not soldiers or even spies, just scientists and assistants. So this is what filled out the action beat. He wrinkled his brow as worry nagged at him. Every time he picked up a newspaper, he felt it would be the moment when the war would break out. I don't think they'll want to get involved. And so what I did is I filled in that action beat with just he wrinkled his brow. That's the actual action beat. But I felt that that alone was not communicating the worry that I wanted. So then I expanded with the interiority there to make sure that it was really clear this is what's going on. And if you notice, I even do a little bit of telling. I use worry specifically. And the reason I did that as I was thinking about writing this 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 piece here was wrinkling your brow can mean a lot of things it can be anger it can be confusion uh it could even be a little bit of surprise there's a lot of reasons that specific emotional thing takes place so i feel like i wanted to identify what exactly that was but there was a little bit of telling to it but that's what i felt was that what finally communicated that that very first step of worry and so i wanted to point the reader in the right direction to read the next action beats correctly and I think it's interesting that you said, well, you didn't show you told by saying worry nagged at him. But then you actually show us the worry. Like when you say every time he picked up a newspaper, he felt it would be the moment when the war broke out. You show the worry. And I think that second sentence just like adds so much to the tell before. Yeah. Anyway, it's great. So, yeah. All right. So then we go. This is then the dialogue that had nothing, no tag, nothing. And then I added, this is worry too. So easy to say from this room, it wouldn't be our lives in danger. Stevenson wiped the sweat from his palms on his pants. And so you've already got the worry there. And I felt like that illustrated that he was, start, the, the worry was making him sweat a little bit. There was, it was straining and stressing on him. So I also felt that that was a stronger communication of the worry and stress. So you could see it building a little bit. Right. Initially, he just wrinkles his brow, but then later he's got sweat on his pants. I mean, on his palms and he wipes it off. So that was worried too. Now we're going to get a, an emotional shift in this next one. So here's the, here's the, here's the section, the line. The distant sound of a static voice drifted into the room. Stevenson held up his hand for silence. It sounded like an old woman, but he couldn't make out the specifics. And then that then rolled over. So I say emotional shift. Curiosity one. And uh, then I added uh, also like after the second part of the dialogue, I put curiosity two. I decided I want wanted two action beats packed in there to communicate that idea a little clearer. And, and by, by the way, to you listeners, uh, Joe didn't really cut anything out of this paragraph. He, he just put in brackets that, OK, more emotion here, more emotion here. Uh, yeah. To try to emphasize the point that is in there in the action, but could be strong. Yeah, so th- 
There were a few times where I did leave in the original action beat and as opposed to just deleting it out, like was on that first one. And that's because I felt like that was kind of communicating it the way I wanted to. But the reason I put that there say, is, again, I wanted to say, let's look at this specific emotion. Let's look at what communicates that effectively. And then I can compare it to what's there because I feel like what's there is communicating that to a degree. Like the shook his head, I didn't feel that was communicating worry. I was like, maybe, but it's just too many other things. But this I felt, you know, he's holding up his hand saying, hey, what is this? I want to check this out. I felt like it could be there, and so I might not be completely overriding it. So we have emotion shift to curiosity, which is curiosity one, and then we have curiosity two. And then those are going to roll over. Uh, yeah, the distant sound of a static voice drifted into the room. Stevenson held up his hand for silence. So I kept that action beat, and then and tilted his head to the side. It sounded like an old woman, but he couldn't make out the specifics. He nodded slowly as he started to make his way towards the sound. So, you have one little extra detail in that first part, which is he tilted his head to the side. So, he's wondering, he's curious, and then you see it with not just the hand, but also the tilt of the head. Very small addition, but I feel like it definitely adds something. So, yeah, so let's, uh, so there's curiosity three, and then we have an emotion shift to understanding and emotion shift to under, to confusion. Now, the, the focal emotion of this scene was, um, frustration. So I want to skip down to that part. So if you, uh, if you get the newsletter, we sent you the link to this. We sent you the link to this, so you can actually, this is probably one episode where you would uh, maybe want to follow along and you can kind of see the changes and the adjustments there. So here's the original line. Two days ago, they imprisoned over 30,000 men, Stevenson said. The war has already begun. So in my in my original draft, it's just a quick tag using said to, to make sure we don't lose the speaker because at this point we have three people in the conversation. So I wanted to tag it so you didn't lose the speaker. Um, so here, I, uh, I just wrote in frustration one. So Stevenson held up his hand for peace. I may have an alternate solution. He swallowed hard. Wait, so on that last one, you had the, the phrase, two days ago they imprisoned over 30,000 men. And then you added, instead of just Stevenson said, you added Stevenson scratched the back of his neck as he shook his head. And then you also added this dialogue, which is, you're not reading between the lines. Yeah. And again, sometimes I felt like the action beat alone was not communicating it. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw that earlier I, when I was, you know, dealing with the uh, the worry that, you know, I looked up, I, I was using the emotional thesaurus, I looked up worry and I picked, you know, one of the very subtle signs because I felt like the subtler ones were, were kind of a, a lighter touch on the emotion. And then when I wrote it in there, I, 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 I now knew exactly the emotion he was feeling in that scene. And I said, I don't feel like that's communicating it. And so earlier I wrote in that interiority where it was his thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, he was thinking about, you know, picking up the newspapers and, and the start of the war. And here I tried to use dialogue to expand the meaning uh, of the action beat of his frustration. You know, this you are not, you're not. You know, expressing that frustration right there that this other guy is not getting it. So that, yeah, so that's frustration one. So Stevenson held up his hand for peace. I may have an alternate solution. He swallowed hard. So that then becomes frustration two. And then frustration two evolves into, um, I have to edit uh, yeah. This out. So you had Stevenson held up his hand for peace. And what you added was then curled it into a fist. So you can see that okay. clenching. Uh, yeah. And then he says, I may have an alternate solution. And then you added the the next beat. He could feel his chest tightening. Yeah. So you start to feel that emotion. Again, em- empathy. You feel empathy because you can feel what yeah. he's feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. So, they again, I ended up using two beats instead of one, which I found tended to be the case. Uh, when I originally was writing it, half the time, my understanding of the emotions in the scene is pretty vague. You know, I know that there's conflict between these guys and they're each working towards their goals. And then the action beats are almost there to break up the dialogue in that first draft. But now 
I know what they're feeling. And I know exactly how I want to communicate that. And that came out of the draft where it was frustration one, frustration two. And so, you know, and having is it labeled as frustration two and like, okay, I did this to express frustration. I need to build on that now. And so we have him hold up his hand for peace. Then he curls it into a fist, you know, we're, we're deeper into frustration now. And I wanted that to be communicated, this fist. And then I added again, the action beat. He could feel his chest tightening. So he's, you know, there's a frustration and a worry blended in that, in that, that third beat there, I feel like. But I guess one important takeaway is that you read through this early draft and you created a map of the emotional content and, and, it, and this map started as a very high level basic map because you're just saying, okay, frustration begins to cool. Uh, f- frustration reaches a climax. Uh, there's an emotional shift to surrender. Uh, and then that surrender kind of continues and builds. So you've created a map for yourself so that you know very clearly what's going on. And then the next draft was to go through and paint that picture make this yeah. a detailed map we're not just putting a pin on the cities <laughs> we're, we're actually showing the city limits now like yeah. there's getting a, to be a very specific picture of the emotional flow yeah and that, that's a really cool thing and so, I, I think it strengthens it a ton so yeah i did find that um in using the thesaurus there ended up being some repetition in it and and so i, I did, did notice two hands were held up <laughs> yeah yeah so not only that but uh, there was a lot of lip curling going on like if you, if you don't just follow stevenson's beats you follow all of them you kind of see that so i did have to go back through again and fix those points um but yeah like the it definitely made it a lot stronger and and a big of it was that it focused me to really look at specifically what is the emotion i want to communicate here what are they feeling why are they feeling it? And how do I communicate that effectively? So this is a little bit of a different episode. And uh, I feel like maybe I didn't map it out as effectively. Um, but uh, Well, it it's mapped well in the draft. It's a little hard to communicate that. Through yeah, I feel like I, I should have pulled it all into a single outline. Mm-hmm. So you could be like, one, two, three, one, two, three. We could just see them side by side. We'll try this one more time, see how it goes. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. So we'll, we'll try this once more. So next next time will be a very theory based discussion piece. We'll be starting our series on Lisa Crone and her mm, her approach excellent. to writing, and uh, then we'll, again we'll try an in depth revision approach styling and uh, see see if it works better on our end. And again we'll, we'll wait to hear from feedback from you guys, kind of going forward, um, to see if if it helps you understand the ideas and be able to apply them better to your own writing. So thanks for listening. As always, leave us a review if you enjoy the show. Uh, Send us an email if you have comments or anything. And uh, if you want to support us, uh, check out one of our books. Thanks, guys. See you next time.